No? Okay. Um, so, you say yes? No. No? All right. So, here we are. At, and I've been going through the Psalms, but I've been reading them backwards. I don't, I don't know why. I just started out with the last Psalm, and I started going backwards. And I came to this Psalm the other day, and, um, and, and I got so tickled with this Psalm. And uh, you'll see why in, in just a minute. It is a beautiful psalm. Most things in life don't mean much to you until you need them. I've used the example an awful lot about uh, a drink of water. You know, it's, it's, it's worthless if you're not thirsty, but go three days without it. See if you won't pay everything you have for that one drink of water. Ask the rich man in hell how much he would pay for one drink of water. So it becomes priceless um, real fast. And a lot of things in life are that way. And even the things of God, we, you know, you, you, you take just having a service out in the field like this. It may be worthless to most people, not much entertainment uh, here, but if, if you get locked in a prison cell somewhere where you're around nothing but thugs wanting to rape you all day long, uh, mm. this, this becomes pretty priceless real fast. You, 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 you'd want this back real quick. Psalms 136, David mm. begins to remember all that God has done for him. Sometimes you ought to stop and, and think about all that God has done for you. And then think about how much God still wants to do for you. So it says in Psalms 136, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Amen. Let's try that again. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to read it again. I want you to say, He is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. He is good. He is good. Uh, Brother Broughton would say he gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto God. Oh, let's see. Oh, my page is going to fall apart. That didn't sound right. Uh, let's see. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, when we come to that next verse, and he says that, I want us to read that mercy part together. To him alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy, mercy endureth forever. forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens. For his mercy, mercy endureth, endureth forever. forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For his mercy, mercy endureth, endureth forever. forever. To him that made great lights. For his mercy, mercy endureth, forever. endureth forever. The sun to rule by day. For his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night. For his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt their firstborn. For his mercy endureth forever. Now when I hit that uh, tenth verse, I just died out laughing. Now if you think God doesn't put some strange and funny things in the word of God you are mistaken you'll find them all over because here's what David does if you, you hadn't noticed this he talks about oh give God thanks oh the Lord is good and then God he's the God of gods he's the Lord of lords uh, to him who alone doeth great wonders keep saying his mercy endureth forever to him that by wisdom made the heavens the great lights the waters uh, the earth above the waters he he made the sun, he made the moon, he made the stars. He keeps going through all these great things that God did. And then he says, 
him that killed all the firstborn of Egypt. I'm going, well, we just went from positive to a real big negative there. You know, we went to all the firstborn in Egypt. We went, we went from all these wonderful glories. I mean, you're kind of on this glorious high. You know, you're you're like feeling all this itchy, uh, itchy, 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 gucci goodness going on. Boy, ain't God good. You know, you're, boy, ain't God good. And then all of a sudden, he just dumps this in your lap. Oh, yeah, he killed all the firstborn. His mercy endureth forever. And what that means is, is simply this, that mercy for one might be condemnation for the other. And so it wasn't merciful to the Egyptians. It was merciful to the Israelites. And so when you look at the Word of God, I mean, the star, well, that's, that's the, the rule of the day. That's mercy to everybody. God being the God of God, that's mercy to everybody. You know, the stars to rule at night, that's mercy to everybody. But then, as, as the Bible always does, God put a division between His people and, and the, those that are not His people. And it wasn't long, you know, when God first started pouring out those plagues upon Egypt. Those plagues came upon the, the Egyptian and the Israelite both. But then it came to a place that God put a division between His people and the Egyptians for the land. The land of Goshen had light, but they were in complete darkness throughout all the land of Egypt. So God put a division between them. In the book of Revelation, God does the same thing. God begins to pour out plagues and judgment. But then there's a place where God puts a division and says, Okay, this is not going to harm my people. And so God puts a division there, and everybody else, the whole world's under this great judgment, but not God's people. And so when you look in the Word of God, it says, and His mercy endureth forever. Now that gives us a couple of things there. Number one, it's whose mercy it is. It's the Lord's mercy. So it's not man's mercy, this is God's mercy. Now if you're going to ever want mercy from somebody, it's going to be God. I've used this example a thousand times. We used to play a, a game called Mercy. In school, you know, you'd grab your hands, and I was a piano player, and even though I was small, my wrists were real strong because Mom made me practice the piano. And so I, I could take those big guys in, in middle school and roll their hands back until big, giant, strong guys would say, Mercy, mercy, you'd bend those hands back. And I couldn't do that anymore. Uh, but, but, but I was 12, and, and I had strong wrists. God is merciful. You know, God can twist you up until you start saying mercy, mercy. God doesn't have any problem getting you to say mercy. The, the Bible tells us this, that there's coming a day that, that, that right now uh, every knee should bow and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. But there's coming a day, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. There's a place where anybody will say mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy is the thing that, that, that I, I, one of those things I, I like to always remind everybody. That mercy is a worthless word. It has no value to it whatsoever. On an everyday basis, mercy means nothing. You can talk about it, use the word, sound spiritual, whatever you want to do. Mercy becomes priceless when you need it. It's only worth something when you need it. But when you need it, there's nothing like mercy. Did you know that God said that He is merciful to the merciful? Which means this, that if you and I show people mercy, God will be merciful to us. If we forgive those, our, our debtors, God will forgive us our debt. But if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. So God is watching us to see what, what we're doing with others. And, and if we're begging God for mercy, but we won't give mercy to others, God said He's going to withhold mercy for us. Now, mercy is something that you're going to need. And there's a big difference between mercy and grace. Now, we are saved by grace. I read this sometime several years ago, um, it, it, a little plaque somewhere, and it, it made this statement. It's, it said, mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. What do you deserve? Well, we deserve God to kill us. 
I've done enough bad stuff that deserves killing. Uh, breaking the law, some of those laws that you, if you broke them, they carry the death penalty. I deserve, I, I deserve death. But not only that, they carry the second death penalty. But the penalty of complete separation, a burning and torment in hell for all eternity. Now, if you get right down to it, if, if you're a lawbreaker like I am, and that means in the presence of a holy God, a, a hell burning uh, is what we deserve. So, so mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. So in other words, God, 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 we are saved by grace. God gives us this great gift of salvation, but we didn't deserve it. So God withholds up from us what we do deserve, and God gives us what we don't deserve. Does that make sense to you? Y'all got that? Okay, so here is God, God granting to us mercy. And, and mercy when we need it. Mercy when we have to have it. And once you've experienced a, a point in your life that God gives you mercy, you know. You know. I want some of you children, some of you young people, some of you husbands, some of you wives to try this this week when you get in trouble. I want you to just drop down on your knees and start crying out to the person that's hanging at you, mercy, mercy, mercy. Now, it won't work with Miss Tina. I've tried it too many times. But try it sometimes. Can you imagine if your child, Brother Jeremy, let me ask you. If little Miss Lily, if, if, if you're about to, I mean, boy, you are mad. You are steaming. You are fuming, brother. And that poor little precious girl drops down on her knees and looks at you with big old alligator tears coming down her face. And she says, Daddy, mercy. Please, Daddy, mercy. Would you give her mercy? Yeah, sure he would. I'd look at him and tell he would. What, 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 what about it, Miss Anna? If, if little Mr. Mr. Brantley come up and, boy, you're about to get him. He's not getting mercy? No. <laughs> Sorry, son, I tried to help you. <laughs> mercy. Look, man, there's hardly no parent on this earth that wouldn't grant that child mercy. Or, or anybody. It's just in your heart, give them mercy if they're begging for mercy. God, one thing that God is, and David reminds us of this throughout this um, throughout this psalm is that the Lord is merciful. Now remember, God's mercy is greater than any mercy on this earth. It, it will supply mercy beyond what any human can supply. What makes this mercy so great is whose mercy it is. It's God's mercy. Everybody say that. It's God's mercy. This is God's mercy being granted unto you and granted unto me. This is God's holy mercy. In other words, God is looking at us. God is saying, man, you broke my law. You went against me. I told you not to and you did. I told you to and you didn't. You broke my law. And, and, and then we, we, we began to realize what we did and we say, but God, we need some mercy here some help God is merciful did you know God was merciful to you yesterday you know God's probably been merciful to you this morning I can promise you this God has not given me what I deserve I've used this example before about mercy and grace 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 is when a 15 year old child dies saved by the grace of God and goes to heaven. That's grace. Amen. John, but he still didn't deserve it. And yet God takes him to heaven anyway. Mercy. Mercy is a hundred year old lost man dying and going to hell. That's mercy. How so? For a hundred years God was merciful to him. Every day God gave him a chance to come to Christ. Every day God was merciful to him. So when an old person that's lost dies and goes to hell, they never got to experience God's grace, but they had a hundred years of mercy. God calling, God drawing, God mooing, God wooing, God trying to get them to come to him. This, that, that, that's mercy. And so God was merciful to them. David said God's mercy for his mercy. What's that word? Endure forever. Now, the fascinating thing about mercy enduring anything that endures means it had to overcome something to get where it was going so if you have an endurance race do y'all you, you older guys remember enduro motorcycles 
they, 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 endure, they still have enduro races. And, and, and an endurance race is literally what it means. It's an endurance race. It's a long distance off-road race where you get on a, an old enduro motorcycle and, and you are seeing who can outlast. You have certain markers you have to reach at certain times and, and it's, it's how long you can last in the saddle. I would not be a good endurance racer because I'm not going to last that long. You understand that? And, and, and so it had to, you had to overcome the obstacles. You know, they would have all these, these rocks you had to go over, trees you had to go over, creeks you had. You had all these obstacles you had to go over, and you had a time frame you had to do it in. It was a race of endurance. When, when I ran track, I always ran the 100-yard dash because I was, I was fast for a short distance. What I was amazed at, though, is, is watching those guys or, or girls or whoever they was, those long-distance runners, they could just take it and go and you watch them and they run 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 they just seem like they keep on going they have a lot of endurance they have a lot of stamina that their, their, their legs are having to overcome each step the the, the the beat of the track or 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 the dips or the sand or whatever it is they're running they're having to overcome the fatigue do you realize if the lord's mercy endureth forever that would mean that there's obstacles that it's having to overcome. On a continual basis, if the obstacles are having to overcome. Now, what kind of obstacles does God's mercy have to overcome? Does it have to endure? Number one, it has to endure your pride. We have so much stinking pride. We're proud about what we look like. We're proud. We're worried about what people think about us. We're, 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 we're proud about where we came from. We're proud about who we are. I used to pick it at, at Joshua. I hadn't seen him walk like this lately. But I used to pick at him about the way he walked. And, and I would say, Tina, who do I look like? And, 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 and it was something like this. <laughs> you know, I think they called it swag. I'm not sure. But, 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 but he, walked, he walked in like he owned the place. And, uh, you know, you'd see a lot of folks do that. Well, that's one thing young people do. But, but pride, God, God's mercy has to get past our pride. It has to endure it. Why? Because every part of us is saying to God, no, 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 no. I can do this my what? I can do this myself. I can fix this problem. How many, how many of y'all wanted to pick up the bottle this morning? Did y'all know what was in it? Oh, come on. Surely you want to know what was in it. Did you not? I was waiting to see how many people would touch it. Brother Jim wanted to know what was in it. Anybody else want to know what's in it? Just something to calm my nerves. That's all. Actually, it's not. I'm just returning them. Every time you turn around... There is something in your way from obtaining God's mercy. That there's an obstacle in the way. There's a distraction in the way. I had I had to keep my eye on them. I just knew one of the boys was going to come up here and trip over that. Now, now, now they, they they just bounce right up. But now, if if one of the ladies would have come up here. And stepped on that. Well, that would have been funny, wouldn't it? No, not if you were going home with them, it wouldn't have been. There are all kind of obstacles in the way. So what God's mercy has to do is to endure. The good news is, is that God's mercy endures past our pride. God's mercy endures past our selfishness. I asked Miss Tina something last night. I want to brag on her for a minute. Can I do that? So I was coming up here to pray and, and, and I walked back in the room. She was wore out. and I think she'd gone to bed about 8 o'clock. But she was awake and I walked in and I said, I'm going up to pray. Um, and I looked at her and I, I said this. I said, now if you can have anything you wanted if God was going to grant you any prayer request, 
Tonight, all you had to do was ask, what would it be for? I'm going to go up and ask God for it. And here's what she said. She said, boy, that's caught me off guard. And I said, but what would you ask for? And she said, I, I would ask the Lord to heal you. And boy, it just, it just tore my heart out. It just ripped me here at such a, a selfless answer. And I thought surely it'd be something for her or one of the kids or grandkids. But it was about me. And, and, and I came up and so I, I asked God to give her her prayer request. Amen. And, 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 and then bless her with blessings beyond what she could ever handle because of her selflessness. You know God did that for Solomon. And my goodness, I, I, I thought about how much of us gets in the way of God's mercy. And so here is God desiring to give us mercy. We, we've done something wrong and all God is wanting us to do is come to Him and get the mercy. Get, get the mercy, get some relief off of us. And, and, and yet we, we are running around trying our best to do it ourselves trying to get this done, trying to fix this problem. How many times you tried to fix a problem and made it worse? Oh, come on, people. Uh, I, I know you have because you called me about it. You know, you think, boy, I can, I, I can fix this family problem here if, if, if this person will do this, and I get this one to do this, and I get this one to do this, and this one to do this. This thing's going to get straightened out. And so you try to get this one to do that, but what ha winds up happening is this one doesn't do what you want them to do, did they? And this one didn't do what you want them to do. This one did what this one was supposed to do. And this one did what this one over here was supposed to do. And by the time you get through fixing this uh, family problem, it's a thousand times mangled up worse than it ever was. God's mercy is having to endure through all that. When if we had come to God in the first place and said, God, well, I need some mercy here. You know what God would have done? He would have gave it. Did you know the Bible says this about God's mercy? Said that His mercy is renewed day by day. Now that's fascinating to me. God's mercy is renewed day by day. And every day in the morning, His mercies are renewed. They're fresh. It's like God has this factory and every day you get up and God's got fresh mercy and there it is waiting for you. Amen. How many of y'all like fresh baked bread? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Miss Tina used to make me fresh baked bread. Miss Tina would take and grind up the seed. She'd buy the seeds. Is that what those call the seeds? Berries, grind up the berries. And that flower would come out and she would do whatever she did. And, <laughs> and she would put it in a pan. And, and all, I, all I know is she ground it up and, and it went in the pan and it came out of that pan and she dumped it over and she sliced it. And while it was still warm, I got salted butter and I buttered it down and it was the best thing that you've ever eaten in your life. I could, I could have it every morning. Every morning I could have that. And I don't eat bread anymore because of uh, the flour problem. But, but, but man, I, I could have it every morning. And I don't think I'd ever get tired of it. I don't think it'd ever get old. God's mercy is like that. Amen. When you need it every day, it's fresh. Every day it's new. And when you need it, there's a fresh supply of it sitting there waiting on you, child of God. As a matter of fact, here's what God says about His mercy. He said, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Not that, we, not that we might, but that we may. In other words, when we need mercy, God has it. There it is. You don't know why you ought to be merciful to other people? Sure, Brother Jim. God's merciful to us. Not only that, I want God to continue to be merciful to me. Look, 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 look. You 
you're going to mess up. Now the Bible says this now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And he is. Jesus Christ is able to keep us from falling. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you leaned on him every day? I've used this example several years ago that the leaning tower of pizza. <laughs> There's no question when she falls which way she's falling is there. Brother, I want you to know that tower is not going to come back up and then fall this way. That tower is going to fall the way that it is leaning. Now, now most people in life are going to fall. And you're going to fall. And you're going to fall the way that you're leaning. If you're leaning away from God, you're, you're, going to, you're going to hit the ground and you're going to hit it hard. And when you do, you know what you're going to need, child of God? Mercy. Mercy. Grace is not coming for you down there. They are twin sisters, but they have different jobs. Grace. Grace will keep you. Grace will save you. But when you go down, mercy is what you're going to have to have to get you back up again. That's going to be mercy. Aren't you glad that there is a throne where you can, you, can, you can obtain mercy in time of need? Do you remember when John, uh, uh, or, or when, when, um, when Jesus looked at the disciples and he said, this night one of you will betray me. One of you is going to betray me tonight. One of you is going to sell me out. Talking about Judas Iscariot. But the disciples didn't know who that was. There they were at the Last Supper. And one by one, Matthew looked at him and he said, Lord, is it I? Peter looked at him and said, Lord, is it I? They couldn't stand the thought of one of them betraying the Lord Jesus. Can you stand the thought of you betraying the Lord Jesus? Can you imagine... Can you imagine somebody walking up to you this afternoon and asking you if you know the Lord Jesus and you denying, you denying Him and saying, no, I, I don't know Him. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not part of that crowd. I, I'm not. Can you imagine how sick you would feel if you did that? And yet Peter did it, didn't he? Matter of fact, he cursed before the, 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 the cock would crow two times. He he cursed and denied the Lord. Cursed and denied him and said, I tell you, I know him not. And his heart smote him. And Peter said, Lord, on that night, Lord, is it I? Philip said, Lord, is it I? And one by one, they all looked at him and said, Lord, is it I? But not John. Not John. Why not John? John was leaning on Jesus' bosom. And John said, Lord, who is it? He knew it wasn't him because he knew he would not deny the Lord as long as he was leaning on his bosom. But the others were not. They were scattered about the table. In other words, while we're leaning on Jesus' bosom, everything's all right. When you're leaning on the everlasting arms, everything's all right. The problem is in real life, you're not always going to lean on Him. If you were, now unto Him, which is able to keep us from falling, if you always leaned on Him, child of God, if you always leaned on Him, you'd never have that problem. You, you, you'd be like John. You'd always be saying, Lord, who is it? Lord, who is it? Lord, who is it? Lord, who is it? Because you know it ain't you. But you're not always going to lean, are you? So when you smack the ground... What you can do is you can say, mercy, God, mercy. And you know what's there to pick you up off that ground? Say the word, mercy. Because here's what he said. He, he said, he said, his mercy endureth forever. When Peter denied the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, and immediately... The cock 
crew, the rooster crowed, and Peter turned, and he saw the look of the Lord Jesus. He saw the eyes of the Lord Jesus looking at him. And Peter, the Bible says, his, his heart melted within him, and he went out and he wept bitterly, thinking, the Lord will never look my way again. Have you ever thought the Lord will never look your way again? Let me give you some good news. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. His mercy Amen. endured your fall. His mercy endured your call. His mercy endured your, 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 uh, your declaration of a lie that you did not know Him. His mercy endured all that you and I ever threw at Him. So David cries out and said, The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. You know how, let me show you how much mercy he had. When Jesus rose from the grave, he, get, he comes back from the grave and here's, here's what he said. Those disciples came looking for him. And here's what he told uh, th those two men. He, he said, you go back and tell my disciples I go before them in the Galilee. And there's, here's what the king of glory Remember, David said he's the Lord of lords. His mercy endureth forever. He's the God of gods. His mercy endureth forever. And here's what Jesus said. Now, Peter has denied him three times. He's cursed, turned his back, said, I'm not one of his. I'm not his apostle. I'm not a disciple. I'm not a believer. I mean, this is how far Peter has gone. And smack, he goes down. Peter is all depressed can you imagine how defeated he felt? Like I have failed my God, my Lord. And Jesus looks at those apostles that he sends and he says, Go back and tell, tell his brethren, tell the brethren, tell the apostles, tell the disciples I go before them in the Galilee. And then it's like he said this, hang on a minute, stop. They stop and turn around and he says, specifically, go tell Peter. Amen. Now he didn't name anybody else. He just said, go tell Peter. Amen. I'll put your name right there. Yes. Go tell Faye. Go tell Haley. <clears throat> go tell Woodrow. Go tell WD. In other words, you go tell him that this morning I got up and I found out mercy was still on the throne and it was cooked fresh and I've got some for Peter. Mercy. Mercy is very personal and it's very private and it's 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 very affordable god god has it mercy is is not a free ticket to sin and fall and mess up ask anybody ask peter ask king david ask samson ask don neese Ask the person sitting beside you. And anybody that's ever experienced God's mercy will tell you this. It is priceless. Amen. And it is perfect. And it is wonderful. And I'm thankful it was there. I'm thankful it was there when I got up this morning. I'm thankful it'll be here when I go to bed tonight. I'm thankful that tomorrow God's mercy will come fresh out of the oven. Amen. Buttered. <laughs> Amen. Waiting on me. Son, take a slice of this and see how good it tastes. Amen. Think not what man can do unto thee, but think how great your God has been unto thee. Yes. Amen. No wonder David wrote a whole psalm about his mercy. Endure forever. 
the next time, child of God, that Satan convinces you that you're beyond repair, I want you to speak this one word. Mercy. When, when the other human subjects of this world brings up your past, makes you feel defeated, just, just this one word. Mercy. Mercy is priceless. Priceless. Worthless till you need it. But priceless when you experience it. His mercy what? Endureth forever. Amen. Let's stand up. Sing it with me. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior is mine. Unto the uttermost wonderful, glorious. Oh, what a Savior is mine. I sure love mercy. I sure love grace. I sure enjoy that God's got an abundant supply of it that never runs out. Amen. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Let's bow our heads. And we're going to pray. Close. Let's bow your heads. Close your eyes. If you need God's mercy today, I can tell you this, God has it for you. Amen. God, God has mercy for you. The Word of God says we have not because we ask not. If you come before God and say, God, I need some mercy, I want to tell you what, God's got it. God, God has it. If you're not saved, well, I tell you, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Call on Him. God said, call on me and I will answer thee. I will show thee mighty things thou knowest not of. If you'll believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day, and that he's coming back. Oh, I tell you, if you'll give your heart and your life to him, you will be born again. If you've never given your life to Jesus, boy, while we pray, I, I hope that you will. You'll trust in Him. You'll let Him know. Just pray it from your heart. God, I, I, I believe in You. I believe You'll save me. I believe, I believe in Your death, Your burial, Your resurrection. I believe the gospel. And I, I want to be Your child. I'll tell you, when you do that, God will save your soul. God will take you just where you're at, just like you are. God doesn't ask you to change anything. God, God doesn't want what you have. God wants you. God wants me. You need mercy today. You come before God and say, God, I need some mercy. I promise you, God has it. Yes. Father in heaven, God, tonight, today, God, we want to pray that you will uh, hear our plea, our cry. God, folks that need mercy, that today, God, you would cry, they would cry out from their hearts for mercy. And I know, Heavenly Father, you would grant it to them. God, if they need to be saved, that right now they're saying, Lord Jesus, save me lest I perish. And God, you'd save. If they need grace, I know, God, we have not because we ask not. Father, I want to ask you today that you continue on a daily basis. Dear God, uh, let us wake up and know for a fact beyond the shadow of doubt, dear God, that... Um, that you just, you have some fresh mercy for us. And God, that's not a license to sin or a license to do wrong because we don't want to do that. But when we do, there's mercy waiting for us. And we are so thankful. God, help us not to take your mercy for granted. And to remember that through all of what we're going through, through all of us and our problems, our heresies, our wrongs, our faults, our failures, that the mercy of God endureth forever. Forever, God. That's a long time. 
God bless us. Bless our church. Thank you, dear God. Bless these people for coming, dear God. Lord, help us this Saturday as we remember Brother James Booth, a great brother for the Lord in Christ, a great, great soldier for the Lord Jesus. God, help us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now before we go, does anybody need to share anything? We'll make sure you have opportunity. Yes, WD. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Oh my goodness. W WD's family really going through it. He told me that before church. See, I forgot it. Uh, going through a rough time. Pray for their family. A lot, a lot of deaths, and heart problems, and oh my goodness. Yes, Miss Charlene. I just want to thank God that Mike is every day. Amen. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Glad Mike's getting better. Been praying Amen. for him. Anybody else? Yes, Brother Kenny. God sure needed this uh, message today. And, uh, well, praise the Lord, Brother Kenny. I just want everybody to uh, keep uh, Kenneth and Lindsay in their prayers. Amen, brother. Amen. Thank you for reminding us that, yes. Brother Kenny. Amen, brother. Amen. Anything else? All right then. Oh, hey, Z man, I can see hand. Oh. oh, yes. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. All right, everybody say mercy. Mercy. All right, you're dismissed. Thanks for coming. Love you, Grace Valley. Call me tomorrow.